What is it? What is it? Sit here, in front. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار uh, today, inshallah, will be the first uh, class that we intended to have. Uh, Allah Mustan, we have been waiting for this for almost I don't know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that it will be delayed up to this moment for wisdom that He knows. So we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank Him for giving, giving us ability to see the first class at the beginning of it. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few things before we jump into the lesson, inshallah. Uh, uh, number one is about uh, the reason why we decided to have this class. Uh, number two, uh, the benefits and the importance of knowledge. I'm sorry, that's number three. Number two is uh, who comes and who will not come. And uh, also the, the, the nature of the class. and. Uh, an undertaking inshallah from from you so that we will not end up by wasting our time inshallah i don't want to repeat what has been done uh, whenever you have a cause like this or a class like this almost everyone is coming but unfortunately uh the fruit is very very little and at the end of the day it fizzles. so i i normally don't stop classes when i begin my classes continues I remember I uh, around 2004, I guess, or five. I started having classes in Inti College, just like these classes between Maghrib and Isha. Inti is in Nilai, uh, so I used to go to that place every Saturday up to this moment. Today was one more Isha. So how many years now? Around seven years. Uh, the first moment when I was going, sometimes I would just go there to sit with one student, only one. And next week also I will go, maybe somebody will come, and nobody will come. They will come and pray in the masjid and run away. Nobody is interested in, in, the, in learning. So there we go, slowly, 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 until the time I see the moment that the, the whole masjid is, is full. So that shows a, a simple dedication that it should be placed when it comes to knowledge. So I don't stop classes, regardless of the attend, uh, attendance. As long as I can have one person coming, I will come for that person, inshallah. Uh, but what I want is what I'm going to talk about, inshallah, in the, uh, the future moments to come, inshallah. Uh, this class, the reason why we, we decide to have it I guess I still remember the time. I was having the idea long ago. But I, I have a class with Fadid and the little tiny kid here also. Uh, the class of Farai. That's the, 
uh, one of the things that inshallah we're going to study and excel in it be the light ta'ala. So this class of Farai, Alhamdulillah they are doing well. So it comes to my mind that uh, we need to have sisters. And uh, there was a sister who motivated actually the idea. It was dead long ago I was having it to so have uh, a simple se session for the sisters alone if possible. Uh, to give what possibly because most of my dawah is with the brothers. In some places I have been encouraging them to include the sisters also in the environment. They don't want. They want to be uh, I mean, alone. And I remember that during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu everyone is involved. The sister told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, Ghalaba Alayna, Ghalaba Na Alayka Rijal. The man they took you, Ya Rasulullah, we cannot have any, ch any chance to study you, uh, from you, because every time you are with them. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave them a day that he used to meet them and teach them about their religion. So everyone has to be involved. So there was a sister who called and doesn't know. How many times I have been questioned, why should I study, how, where, 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 where. Then I said, what, what happened to the scholars? Why can't you, uh, we come and make a something for uh, these people who are looking for uh, salvation, if I can say. So a sister called, and she was crying, and asking about how to learn the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and she couldn't find any proper place to get it correctly. So that's what motivated the idea, and I talked to Father that we should do something. So Alhamdulillah, I found a very strong person in terms of uh, high determination. He believes in something, he does it. Quicker than what I ever expected, Alhamdulillah. May Allah SWT reward him with Jannah. Because of all of these effort that he has been putting, now, now we see. It has been an idea in my mind, but today, because of somebody who knows how to put an effort to make it a reality, we see us nowadays in this space, to begin the first class. May Allah SWT put all of these in the Mizan of his Hasanat. So that's the reason why we decided to have the class, uh, the nature of the class. The class was supposed to graduate, uh, I don't want to say a scholar, but somehow a FAP. Uh, that's the idea. So if this is the case, that's mean a strong dedication should be uh, made by both. The one who teaches and the one who receives your idea. Without this, we will never succeed. It's just going to be the normal classes we have. You see a shed coming to you, talking about issues. You just come and sit and pick up something and throw away what you don't, you don't like. And most, in most of the cases, uh, I mean, we just enjoy sitting in the class, but we don't really, really, really learn in the way it should be. So I want this to be changed. I want us to make a try to imitate those early scholars in the way they learn whereby most of the things they are going to be based on memorization followed by a clear understanding. So that's why I have the name and today inshallah that's the intention to have uh, the people who will maintain the class because I decided if we miss one person for three times continuously without a proper justification then we, we will tell him assalam. Right Father? Then we will tell him assalam in a nice way of course. So we will be taking the attendance, we will know who comes and who will not come. But the most important thing I need from you, please, 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 good intention and sincerity. That's the most important thing I need from you, good intention and sincerity and honesty in what you are doing. But because without this, I'm telling you sisters, you will never make an achievement. Good intention has to be there and I will talk about this inshallah later on. But uh, for the sake of the class, this is what we need. So we need a strong person who really believes. And uh, I don't want, I don't know how to say it. Is it a fortunate or unfortunately? But it gives me a very good impression that there is a good thing in our, in the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because I told Fadil, please, those sisters that are coming to our class Tuesday, right? I told him like this. I said, please. Check amongst them the, the most serious people amongst them. Let us have very small, I mean, strong class with them. Because if I have two, three, four, uh, five people, I can focus more, and I can force them to memorize and to remember whatever I want more than the, the, the huge crowd. But then Father told me that these people registered. I said, Oh, inshallah, uh, 
there are a lot of people who want to learn and know more Muhammad sallallahu alaihi I was so happy, and at the same time also I'm having a strong fear that maybe we will have the strong crowd, but we will never achieve what we intended to achieve if the number is, is very small. But I do believe, inshallah, and this is message as actually I'm sending to you indirectly, uh, to, to, to fight to remove the fear that I have in, in the heart, to say to that fear that no, it is not a reality, it is not true. Even if we are median, we will still achieve that, that, that goal that you intended. So that's, that's the thing. So please, 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 this is the, 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 the history behind the existence of the class. Uh, some uh, questions and some requests from uh, many, 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 many sisters, including those who left the country, uh, thinking that if they go back to their country, they don't have a proper place. And uh, my sisters in Islam, I, I will uh, say this to you. You see, you are in the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you are in Malaysia. And uh, in Malaysia, you are in KL. You are in UIA. You are in Islamic University, which is full of scholars. That's a great opportunity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. I'm telling you, I don't think in Malaysia that is a place that com 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 compels scholars, 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 real scholars. In this country, more than this place. So, for wisdom, Allah SWT brought you to this place. We have some people in their country, they cannot study Islam. We have them. I was approached by a brother. He can study Islam in his country. It is impossible to talk about Islam. It is impossible to look for Islam. You have to just remain in the way you are. And some of them, even they come to Malaysia to study, the government has to take their passport so that they will know where they study. They cannot come to these places and study. They have to study in other universities where Islam does not exist properly. So that we will understand the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us and utilize it also. Because if we don't utilize it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might take it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid. But this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does his things. He gives you you don't use it, Allah SWT will bring others who are going to use it. So let's show Allah SWT wa a very good and great attitude and manners. And then uh, let us show Allah SWT wa that we are willing to change and we are willing to make use of this blessings. So you are going to stay in UI not forever, for, I mean small periods of time. One year, two years, three years, four years. Make sure that you benefited from the moment you are here. And the scholars mentioned that as a student of knowledge who studied in the university, the intention has to be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also you should try to make sure that you utilize every single moment you have in this life. Because these four years that you're spending in a university, whatever this university might be, you will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about it. So we want inshallah to give ourselves opportunity to change this manner to make sure that we don't graduate from this university except with a greater knowledge so that the ummah will rely upon you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my witness my intention is to have something I told one of them that these brothers that they kept on disappointing me I have a lot of classes with them but fortunately I don't want to say unfortunately but fortunately I do not see the fruit in the way it should be so I told them let us make another try Maybe the sisters will do better than them. And they all agree. So let's see. I know what they can produce. But my mission is to make sure that before I leave this life, inshallah, there are people who are upon the truth and they have the knowledge who will carry the message to the ummah and who are going to be responsible in taking care of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to have something like this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Sadaqatun jariya aw ilmun yintafawdi. So one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep it for you even after your death is a, is a continuous charity or a knowledge that somebody is benefiting from it that you need. So that's the intention. So please, please don't disappoint. Be very serious. Let us see inshallah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make a success by having this class inshallah. So the class is going to be, uh, in the way you see, uh, it was supposed to be purely sisters, but I, I told Father he has to be here. 
with his wife. And these guys also, whoever comes, must make sure that his wife are coming. And these are the only brothers, I guess, who are going to be here with us from, from time to time. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, at the end of this class, we will take the, the attendance and, uh, and uh, we made an agreement, me and Father and the remainder of the uh, people who are in charge of organizing this uh, program. And the sisters who arrived today, these are the people that we will consider our students in the class. Those who did not uh, show themselves today, we will not put them in our mind. If they come, uh, if, they don't, if they don't, then uh, we just put in our mind that these, these are the people. Uh, the class is, uh, uh, is going to take place here always, inshallah. And uh, we will be studying uh, Matan Abi Shuja. This is a P.O. Shafi school, uh, I mean, uh, book. We'll be going to this. And, uh, and, and you know, every madhab has a lot of opinions inside it. So, inshallah, it is going to be a very comprehensive class. So, in this Matan Abi Shuja, every single portion of it that we study, you are supposed to almost memorize it. You must. Almost memorize it, you must. So you have five days to read. Yeah. I want you to be a person that, if you are in a state of dream, if somebody calls you, you can answer. Still, you are in a dream, but you can answer. That's how strong you are. And I'm telling you, those people, early generation, this is who they are. At every moment, they have the knowledge. It is in the chest. Imam Shafi said, علمي معي حيث ما يممت يتبعني. He says, my knowledge is with me. Wherever I go, it goes with me. It goes with me wherever I go. He says, in, in kuntu fi suqi kan al ilmu fi suqi. If I'm in the market, the knowledge is in the market. Why? Because he doesn't carry his books. He already memorized them. Wa in kuntu fi al-bayti kan al ilmu fi al-bayti. If I'm at home, knowledge is at home. And now it is. The student now, like what? Whenever somebody calls you to ask you, either you give fatwa without knowledge or you tell him, I will, inshallah, I will reply you later on. You go and check your library and check your books and check and see. If you find something, you let him know. That's the honest people among us. The one who does not fear Allah SWT will give fatwa without, without knowledge. So we want to change this attitude. So inshallah, we will be studying this book. We'll be studying this book. Uh, and, and, and this is one of the most excellent summarized version of fiqh that that ever exist. I was advised by one of my scholars in Medina to pay attention on this book. From there I started trying to memorize the book. It's very excellent. But any any book in, in, in Islam has deficiency other than Quran. There are some opinions and in every madhab as I said you will see a lot of opinions uh, said by this sheikh, said by this sheikh, said by this sheikh. So we will be trying inshallah to prefer which opinion is the correct one. But as a student of knowledge, you must remember all. This is how they taught us in the Islamic University. I remember the first day at Medina. I remember the first, the first year, uh, the fiqh itself. We have a handout. The handout itself is around 1,000 pages, plus one book like this that you have to almost memorize. This is year one, and you don't, you don't only have fiqh. You have, you have usul, around 14 courses that you have to study. I did not know how did I get A, Allahu A'lam. But it just come like this. Uh, but it's just too much, too much. And you can find one, one issue in fiqh having eight opinions. And the manhaj they follow is, you have to memorize all of those eight opinions and the people who said them and the evidence related to each and every one of them and the reason why they are conflicting each other and which one is the correct one and what is, what is the basis of the preference. One issue you're going to compile like a book. You understand? So let us try the same thing. They were human beings when they did it and we also we are human beings. So we can do and this is what they did actually. I was with one of my scholars uh, in Medina, a sister asked in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu there was a Dawra. Dawra means a cross in Fiqh, under the Fiqh was given us. So one of the sisters asked about one of the issues and he was answering, he was answering, he mentioned, I didn't know how many opinions related to that particular issue. We, the students that remain with him, most likely the sister just passed and she came. We, the his own student, we get lost. 
at the end of the day, people are laughing. He himself, he, he laughs because he knows he went beyond the limit. And he told us that, Wallahi, in this issue alone, I, I memorize around 30 views with the evidences. He said, if I'm not afraid of you guys, you will never remember it. I will mention all of them. And then he summarized the issue. This is the real knowledge. So this is actually, Allah knows what I want you, you guys to be. Because this is what we need nowadays for the Ummah of Islam. Real scholars. Real scholars. Somebody who remembers, who memorizes, and who fears Allah SWT and willing to give da'wah to the people. Because there are a lot of people who don't know how to approach Allah SWT. They need you guys. Allah, the Ummah is in a state of need of a strong student of knowledge who knows what they're supposed to do and they convey the real message to them. So the responsibility lies on you. So we will be studying this book. As I said, this is the manhaj. One of them will read and then I will give commentary and everything that is supposed to be said based on the, the Shafi Madhab, we will we are going to mention it and then we'll make a preference at the end together with the Adilla. So what I want you to remember is the mat itself should be almost memorized. I don't look for memorization, but almost memorized. And the second secondly, uh, the translation, the meaning of the mat also should be remembered. This one, no compromise on it. And third thing is, any other related issue that I brought, this one must be remembered. Any other related issue that I brought must be remembered. And on top of all, any hadith or ayah that I mentioned, this one, you must memorize it. So that's not a punishment, but inshallah, we want to make you somebody in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to justify my, and, and qualify my statement and inshallah you will enjoy it. We will say thank you. So these are the main and the most important things I need when it comes to Matin Abi Shuja. I think it's very clear, right? Okay, that's good. Uh, that's the first book we will be studying. The second book is, uh, is a book uh, in uh, Nugal Arabia. That's where we need the, the, the board. I decided to study I forgot the book. Mulhat al Arab. Father, you have the copy? No. That's my fault. Father, you have a copy? Forgot it. Oh, in the car. Why didn't you bring the car here? Samahakallah. <laughs> so, we, we, we went, but this is my fault. I told him no Arabic today. That's why I think he kept it. But I brought mine. It's too huge. Yeah. We will be studying the Mulhat al Arab. There are a lot of books which are easier than it. But uh, it was a good intention. Don't think that we are trying to chase people away. Because when you find it difficult, then khalas, Sheikh, we will never see you again. That was not the intention. The reason why I chose this book is because it is in the form of poetry. And it's a very interesting and easy to be memorized. In the form of poetry, because I want every single letter in it to be memorized by you guys. If I ask you to memorize uh, something like this, nothing, it will be very difficult. That's why I do not demand memorizing the Matin of Ishuja. But I said, should be. Shukran. Father, you broke my book. But I said, it should be almost memorized. It should be almost memorized. But when it comes to Mulhat al Arab, this one should be, must be 100% memorized. You get an idea? So I tried this with some uh, good brothers, excellent brothers. May Allah SWT reward them to memorize one simple book. But every day when they come, mashallah, the memorization is so excellent. Right, Fatah? Very excellent. In such a way, sometimes I will be deciding to cancel the class out of anger. Because we will take like three lines, but mashallah, the highly responsible personalities are busy 24 hours, they don't have time to memorize those three lines for a week. So please, we'll be taking a simple, simple lines, which inshallah, I do believe, if you're going to put an effort, you can finish them in less than 10 minutes. It all depends on what kind of effort you're going to put in. Do you get it? So this Matan Abi Shuja must be memorized. If you memorize, uh, not Matan Abi Shuja, uh, Al-Arab, 
The reason why you should memorize it because this is how you remember the rulings. Sometimes when somebody asks you about this ulum al-alat, you understand, you don't view the ruling, but you view the, the bait. Then you will remember what is said and then you will give them what should be given. Is that clear? So these are the two books that we're going to study. Uh, the, 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 the intention, if you remember, is to produce somebody and to have a very simple class, right? A simple class in terms of amount. So we decided to maintain that class also. But how is it going to be? I decided today, inshallah, to see is there anybody among these people who attended this place who completed the whole Quran? And somebody who has the whole Quran in, in the heart, not to read in, and she memorized the whole thing. Do we have any sister who memorized the whole Quran? Thank you very much, one. I need three more. Come on, two. Next, I have only two. Please don't be shy. Three. Okay, next. No more. Okay. Is there anyone who has half of it? Okay. So please, uh, Father will give you a paper. Uh, if this is the case, then inshallah, we're going to have the class also. Uh, that this, this, this class is going to be the most comprehensive and we'll go further. Uh, we will study Usul al-Tafsir in it and we will study Usul al-Fiqh also. Uh, I call it advanced class. And uh, I decided to make it like this. Nobody will attend unless if you finish the whole Quran or now when I make Tawbah, I will take also half of the Quran. My father, I think that's, that's okay. Half of the Quran also we take. So we can focus. So the other people, you should be jealous of this. So that tomorrow, inshallah, you will do. When you see them next time they come in, somebody, don't blame anyone. They have a program here in the Masjid, right? For Quran. And uh, we also, we have uh, in our website some uh, sisters who will go with the Quran memorization. You can follow up in your house. Uh, so I will have a paper to have the list of the people who will join that online. From your house you read, and the one who will teach you is a sister from a uh, far distance. And using that website, inshallah. The idea is, inshallah, before a uh, few uh, moments, inshallah, you will be able to complete the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those who did not memorize, we open this opportunity. The class was supposed to be also here face to face, we teach the read, but the masjid has. So it will be contradiction, right? It is, it is not appropriate. It, there is a class and we also open another class. It doesn't work with that. Uh, good idea. But through the, the, the website online uh, classes, which I really encourage you to, to attend, we will be having a, a class inshallah. I already agree with the sister that will teach and some other people also that will teach. We will see them. And all of our uh, uh, other programs that we have them online also, you will see them there in, in the website inshallah. That's it for, for this one. Uh, if there is anyone who has a question. Uh, oh, before, before I, I stop. This, uh, the, the two classes are going to be as, as, uh, as follows. We'll be having the class like this, at this moment, from 2 up to 3.15. Uh, 3.30 uh, or 3.15. The class like this. Uh, everyone comes. Uh, and one day we have and the other day we have uh, Al-Lugh al uh, So Saturday, every Saturday we'll be having Fuq and the next uh, day we'll be having Al-Lugh al And uh, after 3.15, then will be the, the class for the most excellent. I'm sorry, eh? the most excellent people who finished the whole book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we'll have the Usul Fuq and Usul Tafsir. You get an idea. Inshallah. So whenever you finish, it is not restricted for them forever. No, whenever you finish the Quran, just join the class. Let us know. Just join. If you finish it tomorrow, no problem. Just join. Inshallah. So that's all about the class and how it's uh, going to be. I found it. Did I forget something? Uh, no. If you have any question before I uh, talk about the importance of knowledge, please uh, do it. I give you. 
two minutes for this. Okay, the, uh, Father says uh, this book, uh, he will take the initiative to make the copies for each and every one of you. Three? No, no, no. Uh, you pay uh, two ringgit, right? Uh, two ringgit for, for each. I think that's very, very cheap, right? So this must be a bit of a digital business, but uh, uh, he said that would be people also you write your name actually he was making it if you want you write your name right and actually it is not optional yeah it is not optional either you get the the copy from wherever you can get it or you make a copy or you take from somebody and copy you have to come with the book in the uh, to the classroom you get an idea i cannot go and check but i just leave you with you honestly uh, our scholars usually don't stop. One of our scholars was looking at this, uh, the student and he found one of them without book. Asking, why is your book? He forgot. He was almost going to chase him away from the class. But then he gave him last warning and he asked the student, also other students, do you agree that, that this unfairness should be taken, that you guys should bring all of your books and he doesn't have it? They said yes, they let him stay. Then the chef let him. So we should uh, maintain the same methodology. Because without it, it would just be the Mawaita class. You come to take the Mawaita and, and go. And we will not go for this. So Father is putting it on uh, option, right? Optional, but I, I ask you to take it. You must, you must have it. Next class, everyone must have it. It can be produced by next class. Okay, now is your two minutes to ask questions. And please, uh, uh, the class is going to be uh, uh, like one of my classes in Nottingham, right? So at the beginning of every class, I will ask you questions about what we studied last week. At the beginning of every class. And I don't accept, I don't remember. Let me, let me tell you something. One of the scholars that I learned he was a Shafi scholar in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu I had this opportunity to have class with him for almost three years next to the house of the Prophet Sallallahu This person, I think, is the one, one of the harshest people I, I, I met in my life. You cannot study alone. You have to be in group. Unfortunately, my group, I am the, the youngest one. One of them, we are three. The, the two, they are friends of each other. One of them is the friend of my father, the same age. So I cannot say to him, come to the class. And if we don't come, the Sheikh will never teach. If one of us is not there, he will never teach you. So I, there was a year, I spent the year going to him for nothing. Because my two friends, they couldn't come. And I cannot go and say to them, please come to the class. Because they are at the age of my father. So I had to keep quiet every day being chased by the Sheikh. After around one year, then he let me come and study alone. But he tested me first, and I was not ready for the test. So I failed badly. He said, you see, you have been coming every day, and this is the way you are. Get out of the place. So I left the place. Tomorrow I came back again. I did not say, like, oh, this sheikh is so harsh. I remember one of my friends when he saw the way the chef was dealing with me and I was insistent to come because I know this, this is knowledge. Who cares? Let him beat. Who cares? Tomorrow, as long as he will not uh, kill, I will come tomorrow inshallah to study. You get it? So uh, tomorrow I get ready for that. Uh, he asked me the question. I gave him the answer. He was so impressed. He said, okay, no problem. Study alone. But the part, the reason why I brought this, this story of this man is you see, I'm telling you, if the man asks you to bring ruler, we are studying Fara'id with him, inheritance. He's a very excellent person in inheritance, expert. If he asks you to bring a ruler, and uh, the group, let's say these are the group, right? 
One of them brought it and the other one did not bring it. No lesson for the whole group. If he comes, he will ask randomly. You just say, Fatih, what is this and that? If Fatih fails, he will not even go to the remainder of the group. All of them will be, will be kicked out. I think it's a very good idea, right? Because if he knows that he will not answer and the group will come back to him and charge him for this, he will work hard and do. So I remember we were the, the first people to study with him. There were some three Saudis before us, and after that we are the first group. I almost finished Farid, then students realized that there is a Sheikh knows Farid, they started coming. I remember almost every day students, before they go to the Sheikh, because they, they know how much harsh he was, they have to pass through me and check the lesson first, and then they'll go to the Sheikh. They don't want to lose the lesson for that, that day. So let's have it like that. At the first time, I will ask questions. Should we make it like this? If one fail, we say to the master of the class, I bring my Quran and go there and revise also. Should we make it like this? Let us give chance for a while, inshallah, to see the attitude that we're going to present in the class, and then we go forward. I found it very interesting if we make it in this way, and everyone is going to be responsible. Because I will ask randomly. I will have the attendance with me, I will just call. Just like this. Bashira. I don't know who she is, but she has to stand up if she is there. And if she is not there, then I know that this one is absent also. Another thing, right? Yeah. So if she did not stand up, uh, no need to stand. If she did not talk, that does mean she is absent, even if she is she's around. So when it happens three times, tomorrow also I will call her name. Three times then we will say to Bashira, we see you inshallah in Jannah. <laughs> That's it. And then after this, then we will have uh, the class. He will read, one of them will read. Then we will teach. After the teaching, then I will open doors for you to ask your questions. I think that's, that's the best arrangement, inshallah. So that's from my side. You have two minutes to ask. Yes. And please, uh, sorry before your question. And please, 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 don't keep quiet. In fiqh classes, silence is not acceptable. I'm not saying that you should keep on shouting, shouting, talking, no. I mean, when, when it comes to you asking questions, don't keep quiet. Uh, we want, actually, faqih means somebody who has fiqh. What is fiqh? Understanding, right? Uh, understanding, that means you, are, you have the ability to extract, to, to deduce, to take something from, from the verses of the, uh, the Quran. But if you are keeping silent, silent, that uh, natural ability that Allah SWT gave everyone will be dead. You have to practice from time to time. Make it try. There is nothing called right or wrong in my class. You get it? Even in the class in the faculty, I don't have right or wrong. Everything is right, except that one that is wrong, then we will fix it. You get it? So there's no shyness. That's why they say, لا يتعلم مستحين ولا مستكبير the one who feels shy in terms of learning will never learn. You're always shy, you're always shy, you don't ask questions, you don't come up to, uh, to, 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 I mean, uh, uh, to be very creative in terms of understanding, you will never learn. And likewise, a mustakbir, an arrogant person also will never learn. You have to be humble. Humbleness means you learn from somebody who is younger than your age, as long as he has something better than what you have. You get an idea. So please, 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 don't keep quiet. Talk. And make sure that you're ready. Get ready for all kinds of my questions. And uh, fortunately, it's not unfortunately, fortunately, some of my questions will be something that I never taught. But it is based on some principles that I taught you in the class. Then I will try to see if you didn't understand properly or we are just fine in a haze. So, when you go and memorize the whole thing we said, thinking that you will answer all of the questions, it might not work. You get the idea? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. Yes. How to memorize Quran? Memorizing anything, any, any kind of knowledge. Okay, okay. It, it will come actually, it will come. I just want you to ask questions and then I will uh, 
the beginning of the book, I have to talk about knowledge first, and then I will talk about how how to make the decision. Any this class is is uh, how long do you say from two up to ah uh, the duration the, the time to finish. When are we going to finish, Father? How long do you think you can be patient? How many seconds? If you can tolerate it. Okay, question. Do you, hello, do you think we should have uh, limits that we have to finish at this moment? No, I know, I know, they, I just ask him. I'm just answering. I want to reply your answer in another way. You see, you have to be creative in everything, right? Usually we give answer like how? Yes, no, yes, no. No, sometimes uh, they go around and then come back to that point, then they will get it properly. Uh, you see, that's the book that we will study, right? And uh, as you can see, the way it is, I don't know whether you have a good sight. Okay, thanks, uh, Father. Thanks. Uh, you see, this is the this is the writing the way it is. So, it has a lot of pages that we have to go through them. So, I will leave you with the first lesson, the way we take it, and then you can determine how long are we going to to stay. One one day, one month, one year, two years, three years, the last month until the last minute of your life. We will see, inshallah. Yeah. But I will try, inshallah, as much as I, I, I can to give you the most important point, not to go into the, I mean, more comp comprehensive detail, inshallah. Because this class is just a foundation. I want you to have the root and the principle so that you can expand the knowledge by yourself. And that's what they do with us. They do not teach us everything. They give us the rulings, uh, uh, the principles, and the formulas, and the kawaid, and then we move forward. Yes, that's, that's the best way of learning. So inshallah we will be doing like this, but inshallah, uh, the more you are, I mean, uh, dedicated to the class, inshallah, the more you benefit a lot. Be the light out. Next question. Nobody has. Fadi, is it possible to have uh, another one like this? Because the last nation in the world, when they talk, I cannot hear. Okay, okay inshallah. Yes. Very good question, right? How is it supposed to be? Because these guys, even I chase away many of them because they don't have wives to come. Yeah. I keep the one who already married and they are my students that go with me every single moment. Even when I go to NT, Nottingham, sometimes we're all together. I go to Khutbah, they go. Wherever I go, they, they go. So I don't want to leave them because I think this is something that they never got. I never had this opportunity to have these kind of classes, intensive class, uh, the way I call it, with them. Exception, cancel, yes, moderate, cannot. Okay, that's good. Can I think of it? Can I think of, of this and then let you know tomo uh, tomorrow? Father will let you know tomorrow. You know, the reason why it's okay if, if, if he's the only one who will come, uh, it's okay, no problem. But if I say yes, then this place is going to be full. And by the last one, I was thinking of it actually. We can make it a family class, but uh, I'm afraid of one thing, which is uh, comprehensiveness and dedication. And the class is going to be more easy class.
Okay, inshallah, tomorrow we'll give you the right answer, inshallah. Happy? Next, the last question. Yeah, we have. Very good. You should thank her for reminding me about this. Uh, we have test and we have exam. And actually, from today, you will start having assignment. Uh, thank you very much. I think we should give you 10 extra marks uh, for reminding me about this. We will have, from today, we will have uh, the author of the book. I decided to not talk about him. A single word I will not mention about him. Who is he? What is his name? That should be your job. So you go and have ten, uh, one page of biography of the man. Where are you going to find it? Which sheikh is going to give you the answer? But what I want is a complete uh, compilation of write biography of the man written by you. No copy is accepted. I used to make jokes with my student that if one letter looks like the other letter from the other person, both of you are cheating. Then I cancel both. But I think this is exaggeration, right? So let's make it a word. If one word looked like the word of your sister, that means one of them copied from each other and we don't know who copies, then we cancel both. They have to do it again. Right, Father? Inshallah. The idea is, as I told you, Wallahi, see Allah SWT knows, the idea is to make you somebody, a reliable person. This is what I want. So, laziness is going to be taken away from this class, Inshallah. You get it? We have to be very serious. I want you uh, to be a person that will never be cheated, Inshallah, in the future. You already have the knowledge. Whenever somebody talks, you know what is going on. Uh, we used to have them, but unfortunately, nowadays, uh, very little. The wife of Imam al Kasani, they said people from all over the world, they used to come and study from her. So don't say it is only Aisha, right? And they mentioned that in the majlis of Imam al Bukhari, there was a sister called Karima. I was using Karima always in my example. Somebody asked me, who is Karima? Who is Karima? So that's the Karima, right? That was the Karima. Her name is Karima, but they mentioned that this, this uh, woman, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expand uh, his mercy and her place in paradise. When you read the first Bari, uh, the commentary written by Ibn Hajar, Shafi is called also, that's the best commentary that somebody ever wrote on the first Bari. That's why when they ask Imam uh, uh, Shawkani to write a commentary for Sahih al Bukhari, he said, La hijrat ba'd al fati You see, the Prophet sallallahu said, There is no hijrah after Fatwa Makkah, right? When they told Imam Shawkani, please do for us another commentary for Sayyid Bukhari. The name of the book written by Ibn Hajar is, is what? Fatul Bari. So he quoted that statement of the Prophet Sallallahu he used it in this regard. He told him, write something, he said, La hijrat ba'd al fat There is no hijrah after fat What does that mean? No of any commentary can exist after this, this one. In the book you will see a lot of times, especially in the first part of the book, Karima, 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 in the version of Karima, in the version of Karima. Why did she get this? Because she believes knowledge is not for the brothers. Unfortunately, in many places, the sisters, they just leave it for the brothers to go and try and learn it. Knowledge is not for them alone. That's why she reached this status. And uh, they mentioned that if the brothers argue, those Jibal, we call them the student of Imam Bukhari, they are like mountains in terms of memorization. But when they get confused, they don't remember properly. The last person to be questioned, up went, whereby after him they will never talk to anybody about the issue, is Karima. When they ask Karima whatsoever she said, everyone will believe in it. What does that mean? She's the best person in the class in terms of learning and memorization. Why can't you be like that? Neither from the brothers or from the sisters, who can compare him, himself with Karima nowadays? Nobody. I mean, honestly speaking, nobody. Whether he is a male or female. So everyone can excel. It's just up to you. You get an idea. So inshallah, if you're going to be patient, it just need patience. At the first time, it might be a little bit of pressure. But inshallah, as long as you're patient, you will appreciate it and you will enjoy it. Inshallah. Last question. 
touching plus. Okay, Ah, the, 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 no, cannot. Ah, yeah, can, 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 can. I was going to reject it, writing of uh, an assignment in Google Arabia. Can. Actually, this is the preferable language for the class. I'm just using English for a while. Inshallah. After a few days or a month, Inshallah, by then you become expert in the language, Arabic. Mashallah, you can speak. Then I will, we will appoint some of the sisters to, 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 to be very uh, attentive. Any sister that talks using another language, we should charge her. This charge us in the, in the primary school. You have to pay fine. I think we should make it like that, right? Or if money is so difficult, then we give you extra assignment. I think that's the best right, attitude, right? Because which, which language is the best language to understand the deep Arabic language? So, inshallah, we will be very serious in this. Uh, if we give assignment, we'll give it in English. But we want you to write the answer in Arabic. Don't worry. Any, any kind of Arabic answer is accepted. Any kind of writing. We will try, inshallah, to find time to correct it so that you will correct your, your mistake, if there is a mistake. So we want the Arabic to take place in the class more than the English language. Do you get an idea? So we will go like this for the time being. You can have the mix of the languages, Arabic and uh, what else? English and Malay. If I can speak, if I don't, I will give the mic to Fadid, inshallah. Okay, I think that's all for, for these uh, questions. So let us have a few. The class every day will take place after four for something, around 4, uh, because now this asset is uh, 4.15, right? So we will try, inshallah, to end the class by 4, so that we will not wait for the, the alarm. So the first class, as I said, will take place from uh, 3 to uh, 2 to 3.15. That's around 1 hour, 15 minutes, right? And the second class will extend until 4, so it's, it's going to be shorter, right? Uh, because they already get tired, they need to focus so we'll not have that long class with them, inshallah. Okay, that's that's it. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu salam ala mawuth rahmatullahi ala ameen. Nabiyina wa habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Amma wa'ala. Before I begin with the book, I will inshallah make an introduction about knowledge and the importance of seeking knowledge, inshallah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ This verse is found in Surah Al-Mujadila. Uh, this is uh, a surah that uh, you can find uh, in every verse of it the name Allah. The word Allah, not only Rabb, but the word Allah is there. It's a very important surah that Allah SWT discusses a lot of issues, especially the unity amongst the Muslims, and also how to be good believers. And amongst the things that Allah SWT uh, discusses in that surah is the importance of knowledge. He says, You will find this verse to be in existence in the Quran that we use, the Green Quran, uh, at the, the last part of the second page of the Surah, the last ayah in the second page of the Surah, if it is in accordance to the one that I used when I was memorizing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate the position and the ranking of the people who believe amongst you, especially the, the people of knowledge amongst them, the scholars. So, whose position is going to be elevated? A scholar. These are the people that Allah SWT has specified, that he focuses on them, and that shows importance of what they are doing. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them in this excellent testimony, which is the most excellent testimony that ever took place on the face of the earth. To testify that He is the only one. In Surah, uh, Surah Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا الله شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وأولي العلم قائما بالقسط الله سبحانه وتعالى witnesses and he testified that there is none to be worshipped except him شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة and the angels they also testified وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ وَأُولُوا الْعِلْمِ You see, right after the angels, Allah SWT says, وَأُولُوا الْعِلْمِ And the people of knowledge, that's the scholars. So I don't think you need somebody to tell you the importance of knowledge after the existence of this verse. So the verse, you can find it in page number 3 of Surah Al-Imran, the first part of the page, inshallah. So go check the verse and inshallah it will be very easy for you to remember it for your own benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the Ulul Ilm also, they are the third who bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one. In Surah Fatir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna yakhsha Allah min ibadihi ulama. This verse you find it towards the middle of the surah. I don't remember the name of the page, but in the middle of the surah, Allah SWT says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَى Verily, the one who fears Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the real person that fears Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala from his creation, all of his creation, they are the scholars. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ عُلَمَى So this is a restriction from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that the only one who fears him is a scholar. Because I'm telling you, my sisters in Islam, the more you know about Allah SWT, the more you fear Him. And actually sins are taking place on the face of the earth because we don't have the fear of Allah SWT at the moment we are committing the sin. We are ignorant. And that's the reason why Allah SWT says in Surah An-Nisa, He says, The repentance that Allah SWT accepts is the one, the repentance of somebody who commits sins out of ignorance. Remember this. The repentance which is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the repentance of somebody who committed the sin out of ignorance. So are we trying to say that if somebody commits sin intentionally, if he repents to Allah, Allah will not accept? No. Nobody says that. Amongst the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaah. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant here is the moment you are committing the sin, you are ignorant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that moment, you don't have the knowledge. This is what Allah SWT is talking about here. Because if you view the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never dare to go against Him. Do you get it? So Allah SWT wa says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَا The real person who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst His creation are the scholars. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another place, in Surah Al-Zumar, How can you think of comparing a student of knowledge with somebody who is an ignorant? They will never be equal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are a lot of verses from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to support this importance. So I get those who are very, very, very enough for you guys to remember. The first one I mentioned is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَتْ And uh, the second one, which one is that? شَهِدَ اللَّهُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ وَأُولُوا الْعِلْمِ قَائِمًا بِالْقِسْ And the third one, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء And the fourth one, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوُ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ you have a lot of hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to support this idea. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man yurid Allah bi khairan yufakkihu fi din." Man yurid Allah bi khairan yufakkihu fi din. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man yurid Allah bi khairan yufakkihu fi din." This hadith is collected by Imam al-Bukhari, so that means it's a very authentic hadith. If Allah SWT wants good for somebody, He will give him the ability to learn the deen. To be faqih, 
he used the word fiqh and this is what we are going to do and that shows importance of what we are intending to do if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you he will make you among the student of knowledge if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you ability and opportunity to be part of the student of knowledge May you Allah be khairan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a clear understanding in Islam that's that's fiqh what do you understand on the contrary it's like what one of the scholars said this means that if a person is not among the student of knowledge that means Allah SWT did not want good for him if Allah wants good he will give you ability to understand the deen properly what does that mean if you are not among the people who are part of the student of knowledge what does that mean? It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal iyadu billah did not want good for you. You know why is it? You know why is that? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lam yuwarithu dirhaman wala dinara. The Prophets and the Messengers of Allah, when they leave this life, they never left behind gold or silver dinar or dirham or ringgit or dollars or riyal or any other currency they did not leave any of those what they left behind for people to inherit is the knowledge the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said therefore man akhadha bihi akhadha bi hafdhin wafir whoever takes a portion of this knowledge that was kept by that was the estate of the, the Prophet. Whoever takes some, some part of it, definitely he is the one who takes the largest portions of blessing. Imam Ahmad said, Imam Ahmad said, Al ilmu la shay'un liman sahat niyatuhu. There is nothing greater than knowledge if the intention is good. That's why my sister in Islam. You see, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, that's my faith and this is my belief. This is my faith and this is my belief that one word you understand and you learn in classes like this that will bring you closer to Allah, a word about the knowledge that will bring you closer to Allah, it is way greater than this world and whatsoever is found in it. One word that you learn that will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any knowledge of Islam. One word, we're not talking about sentence, no. One word that you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is way greater than this dunya and whatsoever is found on the face of the earth. And take this from me, that will lie. Losing that word is a great loss. That's why when you read the biography of the early generation, when they lost one thing in the knowledge, they worry so much. And some of them might visit, visit each other to say the condolences because they lost. They used to be in the classes, I mean they reached a position that some of them, even in the days that there was no class, they used to go to the place where the sheikh used to sit and sit down in the place and revise their books. Somebody asked one of them, why did you always come to this place and the sheikh is not there? He said, I want my soul. To remember that there is no rest in this life i don't want it to think that there is a break so that's why i always come even if the sheikh is not there for all of because of all of these hadiths that i quoted and many others that's why they dedicated themselves and they understand the importance of it my sisters what i will tell you is well like your honor and your respect in this life and your value lies in knowledge the more you know, the more value you have in this life. The more you know, the more value you have in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more you know, the best you get in this life. And the more protection you get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the community. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَإِنَّ الْعَالِمَ لَيَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى الْحِيْتَانَ فِي الْبَحَرِ وَحَتَّى النَّمْلَةَ نَمْلَ فِي جُحَرِهَا Allahu Akbar Imagine an attitude that every single thing is asking Allah SWT to forgive your sins every day. Just because you are among the student of knowledge, every single creation of Allah SWT, the Prophet mentioned the greatest 
and he mentioned the lowest. He said, حتى الحيت هنا في البحر. He hoot. What is hoot? The whale. That's the greatest. Even the scientists they told us that this is the greatest animal creation of Allah SWT on the face of the earth that ever exists. Even the story of the dinosaurs, which we don't even know. They exist, they don't exist. These are all stories from the scientists. We as a Muslim, we believe in what Allah SWT told us. But they said they found some bones. I mean, nowadays cheating can take place at any moment. As a Muslim, this is not an issue that we should do our own. Whether they exist or they don't exist, but the fact is, they themselves, they said the whale is larger, way bigger than the greatest dinosaur that exists. The dinosaur in their brain, the whale is greater than it. So the Prophet Allah said, that whale is always asking Allah SWT to forgive your sins. And also the ant in their own holes, they are asking Allah SWT always to forgive your sins. Imagine an attitude that has this intensive amount of respect, that wherever you go, you will never pass a group of angels except Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala commanded those angels to bring their wings and their feathers down out of respect for you. This is what is happening. You see, you are coming out of your class, out of your house, out of your rooms. If you are staying in the university, before you come to this place, you will never pass a group of an angels except, as long as your intention is good, they will bring their feathers and their wings down. That's the command from Allah Subhanahu because you are not a simple person in the eyes of Allah. That's what I want you to understand. This is who you are. You're walking on the path of paradise after the moment you reach this space. So we hope, may Allah Subhanahu protect you and everyone. But if you are to be taken back to Allah Subhanahu at that moment, Jannah is going to be your position. Be the light of If I ask you, which one is the greatest job? Most of the people will tell me jihad fi sabilillah because of the intensive reward that the Prophet also put on it. But do you know that the scholar said knowledge is way greater than jihad? Look at this verse in Surah Al Surah Al Tawbah. The last two pages, the second to the last page, the last verse in that page, which is the second to the last, Allah SWT says, وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُوا كَافَّةً فَلَوْلَا نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ مِنْهُمْ طَائِفَةٌ لِيَتَفَقَّهُوا فِي الدِّينِ وَلِيُنْذِرُوا قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ It is inappropriate for the believers to pack their things and go for jihad, all of them. Allah SWT says, no. You see, jihad is a defense. That's actually the Prophet, what the Prophet SAW said, that the defense of Islam is this, is jihad. Defended Islam, that's why we get it. Because the Prophet SAW never kept quiet to just let the enemy and come and take the Islam from them. They fought for the sake of Allah to make sure that Islam reaches us safely. But regardless of the importance of this act, act of worship, the Prophet ﷺ, Allah told him that it is wrong for all of the believers to depart for jihad. There has to be a group of them who are going to stay behind and study Allah SWT says, لِيَتَفَقَّهُ فِي الدِّينِ So that they will become fuqaha in the religion of Allah SWT وَلِيُنْذِرُوا قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَحْضَرُونَ So that there will be somebody to remind people about Allah SWT because if all of you go for jihad, what will happen? Then there will be nobody in the Ummah. Everyone is killed and then we just remain like this. All the most important people who can study the knowledge and convey it to others, they will be gone. That's what takes place during the time of Abu Bakr, right? You remember the story of the compilation of the Quran during the Battle of Yamama? They were fighting the false prophet who was the Muslim al Kadab. And these are the most dangerous entity that can exist for the Muslims. A false prophet is worse than shaitan. Because it blocks the means for you to see the truth. At least shaitan can fight in one direction, you can go from the other direction. And shaitan can fight in the other direction, you can go from the other direction. This is the battle between you and him until you go back to Allah. But a false prophet is going to block all of the means for you to see the truth. You will never see it. That's why Alhamdulillah, Allah SWT usually don't let them to live longer time. So Abu Bakr was faced by and I mean very strong false prophet who was Musa Lama Tukatha. They fought him. At the end of the battles, there were a lot of people who memorized the book of Allah, uh, book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People like Salim, people like uh, many, many, many others. They finished the Quran. I remember one of them, he, he looked at himself because the battle is going to be very strong. He said, Wallahi, if I run away from this battle, 
That's mean my memorization of Quran is useless. He took the sword and went in the sand because they have a lot of people who finished the Quran, young men who finished the Quran. So he said, if I run away from this battle, that means my memorization of the book of Allah Swata is useless. He took his sword and he was he was slain. One of them said, Quran does not benefit me. There is no any significance in my memorization if I run away from the battle. So he dug a hole, he jumped inside the hole, he covered himself, except the part that he needed to fight so that he would never run away. These are the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we lost a lot of them. A lot of them who memorized and finished the Quran, they were dead. So Umar realized this thing. He came to Abu Bakr and told him that we have to do something. And that was the reason why the compilation of the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa come into existence. To protect the Quran from perishing. Because if every day they go and fight, they're killed. A day will come where we will never find a single person who finished the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You get it? That's the reason why Allah SWT says, فَلَوْلَا نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ مِنْهُمْ طَائِفَةٌ لِيَتَفَقَّهُ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَيُنْذِرُ قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَحْذَرُونَ Take good idea. So, these are some of the uh, I mean, instructions from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that shows the importance of knowledge. Knowledge comes before everything. Knowledge comes before everything. Bukhari, Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, he has a topic in his book, Sayyid Bukhari, that says, Babun al ilmu qabl al qawli wal amal. Knowledge before qawl, statement and saying, wal amal. Before you practice, you have to learn first. Knowledge comes first. And that's the indication also in the Quran when Allah SWT says in Surah Muhammad, He says, Fa'alam annahu la ilaha illallah. That's in the second page of Surah Muhammad, the last verse in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ You see, he says, فَعَلَمْ No. So he started with what? Knowledge first. أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So it comes even after, uh, before the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You get it? So it means it should be the, the only thing that should take the priority. You get the idea? So these are some of the things that I will say to, 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 to motivate you, inshallah, to be amongst the people of knowledge. And the uh, following moment to come, a few minutes that left, inshallah, I will be talking about some of the tips, tips that she asked, how to excel in learning. So do you get the verses? Do you get the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu So I'm going to demand every single thing I said. So if you have deficiency in your in what you write, please take it from your sister. Understand? We will try to put the record in there. You can go and see it again and read again uh, in, in, in from the website. But the question is, please, before you come back to this place, make sure that you uh, encompass it, encompass every single thing that we said in this place. The idea is to keep it with you, as I said, forever. To go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with the knowledge. So these are the things uh, that I intended to mention to you. There are many others said by the scholars and the Prophet sallallahu How to become a very good and a successful student of knowledge? The first thing you need is ikhlas, sincerity. The first attitude and value is sincerity. Take this serious more than anything else. Without sincerity, knowledge will never remain with you. It will go. The barakah that is supposed to be inside Allah SWT will take it. One of the one of the scholars in uh, uh, of Shafi, Imam Al Mawardi, he wrote a book, and he hid the book. He said, "Ya Allah, if I write this book for your sake, let people see it after you after after I die." So he hid the book. He dug a hole and put it in somewhere else. He never showed anybody the place of the book. We want to test his ikhlas. So after he died, we got the book and we are reading, reading the book. So the scholar said this shows the good intention and this is the nature of our own scholars. They don't learn the deen for something else other than Allah subhanahu wa So don't waste your time, my sisters. Yeah. Don't waste your time to study something, to keep every moment of your life learning without having a good intention. This knowledge that we are studying 
It shouldn't be learned for dunya. It should not be learned for fighting. It should not be learned for argument. Some people, they learn the knowledge so that they can go and fight each other. They can go and tell somebody, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. That's the attitude. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever seeks the knowledge when it's supposed to be for the sake of Allah, but he is not doing it for nothing except to argue, to debate with it, except to look for dunya with it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take him to hell. So it's very dangerous, right? That's why, please, 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 my sisters, do remember this hadith. They mentioned that Abu Huraira used to faint when he recited this hadith. The first three people that Allah SWT will take to hell in the hereafter. Who are they? Alim, a scholar, and a rich person, a wealthy man, and a mujahid fi sabiillah. They mentioned that Abu Huraira, he used to faint when he recited this hadith. Because it is too strong, because these people, they are with us learning and as, according to what we see, their learning process is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what happened? In reality, they were not doing it for Allah, they were doing it for something else. So he said, The first three people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take to hell, is going to increase the heat of hell with them, they are the Alim, Mujahid, and Aghani. Alim, Mujahid, and Aghani. Alim, Mujahid, and Aghani. Alim is the first one actually that Allah SWT will bring. And the Prophet SAW said, فَيُعَرِّفُهُ نِعْمَهُ عَلَيْهِ Allah SWT will bring him and remind him about his blessings and his favors upon him. I taught you. I give you the knowledge. I teach you this. I give you this. You don't have any of these things but I gave you. I favor you over everyone in the society who is not, not having what you have. What did you do with it? And then he will say, Ya Allah, Qara'atul Quran wa Akara'atuhu fiqh. Ya Allah, I recited the Quran and I taught people with the book of uh, your book and I was doing that for your sake. Look at the statement. Ya Allah, Qara'atul Quran wa Akara'atuhu fiqh. Ya Allah, I recited the Quran, I recited the Quran and also taught people the book that you gave us, which is the Quran, for your sake. I learned the knowledge and I taught people the knowledge for your sake. What do you think Allah SWT will say? فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَ لَهُ كَذَبْتِ And then Allah SWT will tell him, you are lying. My sisters, imagine in that position in front of all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person is brought back to Allah, everyone can see him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, you are lying. That's why Abu Huraira, when he read this hadith, he used to faint because of the impact. He used to faint because of the impact of the hadith in his heart. It's so strong a hadith that shows a person that you have to be very careful. Hassan al-Basri, Hassan al-Basri, one of the great uh, tabi'een, who is a tabi'i? Somebody who met a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Somebody who met a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A tabi'i is somebody who met a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is somebody who met the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a Muslim and he dies in Islam. A companion is somebody who met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't, don't tell us somebody who saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't, we don't want that. We want somebody who met. Because if you say somebody who saw the Prophet, then people like Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum, the blind person, they will never be a companion because they never saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You get it? So the, the most accurate definition for a companion is somebody who met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a Muslim and he dies in Islam. A tabi'i is somebody who met a companion as a Muslim also dies in Islam. That's a tabi'i. So Hassan al-Basri is one of the blessed tabi'in that met around 500 companions of the Prophet sallallahu That's opportunity, blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fadullahi yutihi maisha. To be the student of 500 companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's, that's, that's too big. So this Hassan al-Basri said, I met around 
60 companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kulluhum yakhafu nifaq ala nafsihi I met around 60 companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kulluhum yakhafu nifaq ala nafsihi He said I was with 60 companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam each and every one of them was afraid of being a munafiq in his life What does that mean? They are always and constantly checking their ikhlas they always have doubt. Maybe they're doing it for something else. Maybe they're doing it for something else. Get idea. So this is how a Muslim should be. Ibrahim ibn Adham used to say that we never saw a person, Ibrahim ibn Adham, one of the great scholars of Islam, he said, we never saw a person who used to think that his iman reached the peak of faith and he will never get distracted by the evil of shaitan except at the end of the day we will see him losing that part of the iman he says we never met in our life a person who believes that he is the strongest person in the iman and his iman can never be affected by nifaq except at the end of the day he lost the iman so that means i shouldn't be so sure right because if i'm so sure that i'm i have the the, the correct one the best one and i'm the highest what does that mean I will never make effort to protect it. You get it? But if I think that I'm deficient and I can be attacked by shaitan at any moment, I will make effort to make sure that my iman remains. Do you get the idea behind it? So the first thing a student of knowledge needs is sincerity and ikhlas. Don't you ever learn a word for the sake of something else, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single letter you are learning, it should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So come to classes like this and any other class you go, make sure that Allah SWT is in your heart. Don't look at your sisters, who is coming, who is not coming, who is doing, who is not doing. No, that should not be your concern. Your concern should be, how much am I learning so that Allah SWT will be more happy than me? Because I do believe the more I learn, the more position I earn in the eyes of Allah SWT here in this life, as well as a year of term. So sincerity should come first simply because of what I mentioned and secondly because it is the only way to keep what you memorize I will give you this simple scenario that please remember it if you do something with sincerity it will not go that's why when they came to Imam Malik he was the first person to write the most comprehensive book of hadith who is that person Imam Malik right remember this the first person to compile the most comprehensive book of hadith which Imam Shafi used to say that there is no book on the face of the earth apart from the Quran which is better than Muatta Imam Malik his book called Al Muatta his book called Al Muatta his name is Imam Malik right so remember this Imam Malik was one of the best teachers and the scholars of Imam Shafi good idea so really you need to remember the name Imam Malik when he wrote the book, he has a lot of colleagues and, and uh, classmates and people who study with him and they used to compete him actually. They used to think that they are better than him. People like Abdurrahman ibn Abi Dhib. You see, both of them are very strong in terms of learning, in terms of knowledge, but they were fighting each other. They once told Imam uh, Abdurrahman ibn Abi Dhib that there was a fatwa given by Imam Malik. Look at the, the, com look at the commentary and the refutation given by Ibn Abi Dhib. He was talking to who? Imam Malik. But he said, you have to go back to Malik and tell him to repent to Allah SWT because of this fatwa or else we must cut off his head. So that's the thing that usually goes between the scholars themselves. How do we benefit if the scholars are fighting each other? To take side? No. As a student of knowledge, when you see your scholars, your shuyukh, they're fighting each other, you shouldn't take a side. You should be in the middle. You go to your sheikh, he will tell you, ah, you know, Sheikh Fadl is a very bad person. Sorry, Fadl, you're good. He will tell you that Sheikh Fadl is this and that. If I am if I am if I don't know how to study, I will say, Yeah, yeah, I also see some something. Sheikh inshallah will help you against him. Now as a student of knowledge, I shouldn't do that. When my sheikh talk about another sheikh, what should I do? Just smile. Don't say anything, just smile. Don't you see this? The sheikh will be trying to insinuate you, to motivate you to talk. Don't you see that? Didn't you hear what he said? Just smile. Don't say anything. Because if you take position and you like what the sheikh said, what does that mean? You will never study from the other sheikh. Who is losing? You're losing. The sheikh is not losing because he already has his knowledge. 
That's why you shouldn't take side. When they talk, you smile. You go to another shaykh, he's going to talk also about the other one. Just smile. Take the knowledge here, take the... That's why Imam al-Dhahabi said, Kalam al-Aqrani yutwa wa la yurwa. Kalam al-Aqrani yutwa wa la yurwa. Kalam al-Aqrani yutwa wa la yurwa. The conversation and the fighting and the argument of Akran. Akran, these are the colleagues, classmates, people who study, I mean, together at one time. They're fighting each other. They say whatsoever they say. Yutwa. Yutwa means you just fold it, close it, keep it aside. La yurwa. You shouldn't narrate it. Should not narrate it means you shouldn't take a side. Don't believe in any one of them. If they talk about knowledge, take it. If they talk about themselves, just keep it aside. Because if you take a side, then you will never learn from from one of them. So what I wanted to say is, Ibn Abi Dhaib was fighting Imam Malik. And a lot of people there who were fighting Imam Malik, when Imam Malik wrote his book and Muatta, many other Muatta'at, they are coming. Everyone is writing Muatta. Everyone writes a book, he will call it Muatta, 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 Muatta. What does that mean? It should not be only Imam Malik producing books. We also, we have the qualification. So they were writing them for what? To compete with who? Imam Malik. So the student of Imam Malik came to him, they said, Ya Imam, Kathratul Muatta'at. There are a lot of Muatta'at nowadays, everyone is writing after yours. He said, no, just relax. He said, student, you will know, inshallah, what is written for the sake of Allah's matter will remain. Today, wherever you go, the moment you say Muatta, the first person that will come into your mind is who? Imam Malik. The remain of the Muatta'at, did they perish? Some of them were gone, but I'm telling you, almost all of them are still in existence. But nobody knows them except somebody who is really, really study, study, the, study Islam properly. I mean, really a student of knowledge. They are completely hidden. The only one that is exposed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Mutta Imam Malik. That's the sign of sincerity. Look at this person, Imam al Nawawi. His books almost wherever you go, you see Riyadh al Salihin, you see Arba'un al Nawawiyah. What does that mean? It shows sincerity. Every place you go, Allah is going to take the book to almost every place. Whether you are Shafi'i, you are Hanbali, you are Maliki, you are Zahiri, you are whatever, even your own madhab, you have books of Imam al Nawawi and you benefit from them. And you believe that Imam al Nawawi reached the peak of the Ijtihad. Good idea. That's the Thamara of Ikhlas, and this is what will help you. And I'm telling you, especially you guys who are willing to keep on memorizing the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, I was thinking of making this class actually compulsory that everyone should memorize the book of Allah. Completely. And I think we're going to go with this, inshallah. But slowly. I don't want you to run away from the first class. But inshallah, after you get familiar with the class, you love it so much, the time that you think you can never do without it, then I will put some other restric restriction, inshallah. I think that's, that's, that's more applicable, right? That's good. So the first thing is ikhlas, right? So let us have ikhlas and alhamdulillah, as the scholars have mentioned, I guess Imam al Nawawi, he said, at any moment you feel that you have problem with your ikhlas, you can, you can fix it. You get it? So if I'm here not for the sake of Allah, alhamdulillah, I can change my intention right now to make it for Allah and Allah SWT will accept it from me. That's good news, right? Alhamdulillah. So let's try to make sure that everything we're doing is for who? For Allah subhanahu. That's the first thing. The second thing I will suggest is to get a sheikh. Knowledge cannot be taken individually. Reading books, going online, searching for fatwa, what do you call it? Fatwa shopping. This one will never benefit you. I disturb these guys that we are studying for with them. You see, my, my manhaj with them is the book. They have been staying, studying with me for almost a year, right? Almost a year. I did not give them the book up to this moment. They don't have it. And my condition is they should not take the book. Sometimes even when one of them asks me to give the book, I refuse. Remember the time Muhammad always asked me to see the book, I tell him, no, I cannot. Not now. I know exactly what I'm doing. In the moment of foundation, you have to take a sheikh and listen to the sheikh. It's a terrible method. That's what they used to do take from him and this is what we did sheikh said go this direction we go why are you going to this direction i don't know but sheikh said we should go that's where success comes because they have experience more than you they went through the system they know how to get it you might be having your own version but practice it alone don't contradict what he says 
The Shaykh should be your guidance. Without Shaykh, you will never succeed in learning. I'm telling you, Wallahi, you see, to be honest with you, without a proper Shaykh, and Shaykh, what the, the meaning of the Shaykh is face-to-face -face Shaykh. Or at least you're learning, even learning distance through online courses, but there is somebody who is interacting with you, whereby you can ask, you, if you don't understand, you can question, if he, he can ask you, this is how we learn. I always tell them that, you guys, YouTube and, uh, what is the other one? Google, all of these shiuch and the scholars, Sheikh Google and Sheikh YouTube, should divorce them a million times. What does that mean? Does that mean you should not go and watch videos on YouTube and everything? No, I do not mean that. But I'm telling you, if you are really and you're honest in your learning process, YouTube is a waste of time. And if you dwell on YouTube, watching the lectures of people, it takes most of your time, you will never be like that sheikh who is talking to you. Because the sheikh that is talking on YouTube, he never learned through the way you are learning. You will remain in the way you are and he will keep on increasing because he doesn't watch YouTube to, to, to increase. He go through the, 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 the real process to get, to get the knowledge. So I don't say don't watch, no, it's beneficial, you can watch. But when should I go for the YouTube? Sheikh YouTube. I should go to sheikh YouTube when I become somebody who can differentiate what is good and bad, YouTube has everything. Trash, good, medium, evil, it has everything. Excellent, you can find it. But the question is, honestly speaking, let's be honest to ourselves, and this is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمُ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْئُولًا The fourth page of Surah Al-Isra talks about the forbidden things the third and the fourth, Allah wants to talk about a series of things that you shouldn't do. One of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La taqafu ma laysa laka bihi The last part of that page, page number four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La taqafu ma laysa laka bihi Don't you ever follow and say something that you have no knowledge of. Inna sama wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ula'ika kana anhu mas'ula. Because the hearing and the seeing and the heart are going to be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about what you did with them. So it's a very great responsibility, right? I shouldn't say without knowledge, and I shouldn't do without knowledge. So that means I should take a proper, proper position to take my knowledge from them. Because knowledge is deen. You should make sure that you're taking your deen from an honest person. You don't take deen from everyone you see. That's wrong. You take the deen from somebody that you trust, somebody that you believe will guide you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will never lead you astray. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna sama wal basara wal fu'ada kullu laika kana anhu mas'ula. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question you about, about that. One of the most excellent poetry that I like in this regard is the saying of one of the scholars. He says, Ida ma qatatta shay'a ilman faqul bihi. وَلَا تَقُلِ الشَّيْءَ الَّذِي أَنْتَ جَاهِدُ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَهْوَ أَنْ يُرَى مُتَصَدِّرًا وَيَكْرَهُ لَا أَدْرِ أُصِيبَتْ مَقَاتِلُ Who memorized it? Nobody. Nobody. Long ago they used to just hear poetry once and that's all. Is there anyone who can repeat it? 60,000 ringgit minus 70,000. Nobody. Okay, I will say it again. إِذَا مَا قَتَلْتَ الشَّيْءَ عِلْمًا فَقُلْ بِهِ وَلَا تَقُلِ الشَّيْءَ الَّذِي أَنْتَ جَاهِلُ إِذَا مَا قَتَلْتَ الشَّيْءَ عِلْمًا فَقُلْ بِهِ وَلَا تَقُلِ الشَّيْءَ الَّذِي أَنْتَ جَاهِلُ إِذَا مَا قَتَلْتَ الْعِلْمَ إِذَا مَا قَتَلْتَ الشَّيْءَ عِلْمًا فَقُلْ بِهِ وَلَا تَقُلِ الشَّيْءَ الَّذِي أَنْتَ جَاهِلُ I think even if your brain is like mine, you should, you should memorize by now. وَلَا تَقُلِ الشَّيْءَ الَّذِي أَنْتَ جَاهِلُ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبَى أَنْ يُرَى يَهْوَى أَوْ يَهْوَى فَمَنْ كَانَ يَهْوَى أَنْ يُرَى مُتَصَدِّرًا فَمَنْ كَانَ يَهْوَى أَنْ يُرَى مُتَصَدِّرًا فَمَنْ كَانَ يَهْوَى أَنْ يُرَى مُتَصَدِّرًا وَيَكْرَهُ لَا أَدْرِي أُصِيبَتْ مَقَاتِلُ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَهْوَى أَنْ يُرَى مُتَصَدِّرًا وَيَكْرَهُ لَا أَدْرِ أُصِيبَتْ مَقَاتِلُ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَهْوَى أَنْ يُرَى مُتَصَدِّرًا وَيَكْرَهُ لَا أَدْرِ أُصِيبَتْ مَقَاتِلُ I will give you the translation of the Baita. 
He says, إِذَا مَا قَتَتَ الشَّعَ عِلْمًا فَقُلْ بِهِ When you killed an issue in terms of knowledge, he uses the word killing, that means you go deep in knowing everything about it. فَقُلْ بِهِ Then, only then you can give fatwa about it. When you're sure and you study the case, you go deep in terms of understanding and learning, then you can give fatwa. Who is like, who is like this in this life? I'm telling you, almost little and few. Especially our students of knowledge. Everyone is what? Mufti. And I'm telling you, if you know the responsibility and the position you're putting yourself, you will never dare to say a word, even if you know it sometimes. Imam Suyuti mentioned that sometimes uh, those uh, early predecessors, a person will come and ask them a question. He will ask one person and this person will tell him, he knows the answer, but he will tell him, go and ask Sheikh so-and-so. He doesn't want to be responsible. And Sheikh so and so and so also will send him to another Sheikh, to another Sheikh. To another. Sometimes the Prophet will keep on going around the community and come back to the first one. Imam Suyuti said some of them, they cry before they give the fatwa. Because, my sisters, when you open your mouth and say, Allah said, your position is like you are placing yourself as an agent for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Imam uh, Ibn al-Qayyim wrote a book, he called it Ilam al Muqina Rabbil Alameen. A reminder for those people who sign an agreement between them and Allah SWT that they are going to convey the message on his behalf. What does that mean? It means in the hereafter Allah SWT is going to bring you and tell you how did you convey the message. Are you honest? Did you really give the one that you should be given or you cheated in the message or you give fatwa without knowledge? So, don't you ever say something that you don't know. If you, if you wish, and the only thing you think of is, I mean, to have people seeing you, I mean, uh, occupying the places and the position of the scholars, giving fatwa, becoming the mufti, you don't think of anything except how to give fatwa to the people without any consideration. And you don't like to say, I don't know. This is our own attitude, right? We know everything nowadays. We don't say, I don't know. I remember one of my scholars, the scholars of Hadith in Medina, uh, Sheikh Abad. I never saw somebody who knows Hadith more than him. He taught me in the year three in the university. Also, I used to attend his classes of Sunan Abi Dawood. He said, I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you will remember one of the things you remember about him is La Adri, La Adri, La Adri, La Adri. Great scholar, but whenever they ask him, many places, La Adri. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. He says, وَيَكْرَهُ لَا أَدْرِي أُصِيبَتْ مَقَاتِلُ If you don't like to say and you don't know towards those things that you don't know them, you are dead. أُصِيبَتْ مَقَاتِلُ means the one who is shooting you, he got the right position that when you are shot in that place, you will die. You get an idea. So you know how it is? When I say something that I don't know, if you ask me a question and I give you the answer in something that I'm not sure, I am trying to release you and to give you relief in your problem to settle your case and your problems by putting myself into trouble with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you get it properly? So at this moment, my advice with you is close your mouth. Don't talk about something unless those things that you learn and you understand. When somebody asks you, send them to another sister who knows better than you. If she doesn't know, send them to another sister. Send them, send them, send them, send them until you reach somebody who knows who can give the fatwa properly. So getting a sheikh is essential because he's the only one who can put you on the right way. So just book that you should study. And when you are with the sheikh, there are certain issues that you have to maintain. The first thing is respect. Wallahi. Thumma Allah. He says, what about Allah? You will never get blessings and barakah in the knowledge you're learning as long as you're not having respect to your sheikh. You can't walk in front of your sheikh. That's wrong. They don't have this attitude. But nowadays we have it, right? Yeah. You cannot see your sheikh and wait for the sheikh to come and say salam to you. You cannot pass your sheikh without saying salam to the sheikh. You cannot see your sheikh carrying something that he needs somebody. Or even if he doesn't need somebody and just leave him like that. We don't do this, and the rightly predecessors and those scholars, they never did that. That's the respect. And on top of all, this one is, I mean, said by the Prophet ﷺ that we have to give all kinds of respect. And the second one, which is on top of all, is like you have to be patient with your sheikh. Because some of the shiuch, they're so harsh. 
Remember my Shaykh, the Faraya Shaykh, how he used to chase me, but I kept on following him. The one who taught me Ilm al-Qiraat, you will not believe it if I tell you, but I was chasing this Shaykh for three years. After three years he accepted, so I had a very excellent moment of learning with him. He gave me permission to come and study with him at home, alone. Very excellent days I was having with him. I studied with him, Usul al-Shatibiyya, as Usul al-Qaraat. That was the time I, I was learning all of these things. But if I was not patient, he told me that inshallah I would think and he doesn't think, I would just go and look for somebody else. But because my Shaykh, that's the importance of having Shaykh, right? My Shaykh, Shaykh Adil, the one who taught me tafsir in the year two, the university, he told me that the best person to learn Quran from him in Medina is Shaykh Abdul Rafa ibn Ridwan. He's one of the people, when you take the Mus'haf of Medina, open the, day, uh, the, the page, the legend, you will see his name is there. They were the people who founded the faculty of Quran in the Islamic University. An old man, a very knowledgeable person. In my life, I never saw somebody who memorized Quran more than him. When we are studying Shatabiya with him, if he decided to take examples from the Shatabiya, it's like he is, it's like he is the one who wrote the Quran. He would just do like this and tell me in Surah Al-Baqarah we have this place. In the second ayah also said the same thing. Like this, he will scan, scan Quran in few minutes and extract all of those examples that are supposed to be given to you. You see, what kind of knowledge is this? I used to go to his house from the Islamic University working. That's like from here to know, Charas. Yeah. Somebody will say that this is so difficult, right? cannot, right? You have to get an uh, aeroplane to take you to that place. I used to. That was another ship also. I used to walk to his house because I know what I'm getting from them. Do you get the idea? I was with my sheikh, the one who gave me ijazah. I was studying Quran with him. I make, made a mistake. He hit me on my thigh. I wasn't a kid. I'm telling you, it was very painful. But I remember this is scholar, sheikh, big sheikh actually. The, the, the people that imma in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were his students. So, alhamdulillah, I got a position from him. He used to look at me like his son. After this moment, I'm telling if I'm to take my phone to call him, or just tell him Ibrahim, he knows who is Ibrahim. I stayed with him for a year just to study the method of reading Quran with him. So after a year, he let me come. To my knowledge, I am the second person that he ever let to recite Quran twice and he gave me two ijazah together with one ritual. He usually gave only one. But patience was the thing that helped me with him to give me this favor which he did not give somebody else. You get it? There was a time he asked me to bring a cup of water. This is very strange. Bring a, get him water. So I brought a cup of water to him. In my country, it is a disrespect. If my father or some scholars ask me to bring water, if I do not make it full, I bring it to him, they will shout at me. Am I begging you give me this, this water? Go make it full and bring it back. So I thought this is the universal attitude. Then I found that this is different from another country. I brought him a full cup of water. I'm telling you, next to the uh, house of the Prophet Summer, the man in front of everyone, he poured the water on me. It reached heart. I got annoyed, people are looking at my friend, they are making fun of me. I said, this is knowledge. Wallah, I was patient. I get annoyed and he realized that Ibrahim is annoyed. So he called me one day. He said, Ibrahim, just because I did something with you, you get annoyed. Wallah, you see, I was annoyed and I was thinking that this is inappropriate from my sheikh. You understand, but I didn't take action. But when he said this word, it makes me feel guilty. I was thinking that why did I even let him to realize that I changed my face? I regretted. The word went to the heart. From that moment, one of my students was telling me that I don't know what kind of patience you have. I told him, brother, I don't stay in Medina forever. These guys, I can only see them here. If I go back to my place, the knowledge is gone. If I'm not patient, who is losing? I'm losing. Let them beat, let them slap, let them do as long as they give. I don't mind. Imam Malik met somebody on the way. And the man says, Imam, please, can I, can I, can I get hadith of the Prophet sallallahu Imam Malik got mad at him. He did not say anything when he reached back home. 
he asked his student, who was the person, go and meet the person that asked me to give the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu while I'm working. Because they respect the hadith. You cannot ask for the hadith when somebody is just moving. They need to sit down, prepare for this and all of these things. So when he asked them to go and check, who is that person? When you reach him, go and beat him 20 times. When they went, they found out he is actually the, 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 the leader of Medina. In terms of the second person in Medina, after the, the king. So they told him, Imam, cannot be beaten, this is so and so. He said, go and beat him 20 times because he is the best person to be educated. They went to him, they said, Imam says we should beat you 20 times. He said, who said? He said, Imam Malik. He said, go ahead. So they, get, they took revenge. Get him for 20 times. At night, Imam Malik called him to, to his house. He said, <coughs> sorry. He said, the reason why I, I asked him to beat you because you disrespected the son of the Prophet. But since you accept the punishment, I will give you with every whip one hadith. So he gave him 20 hadith. He said, Wallahi, I wish Imam asked them to beat me 100 times so that I will get 100 hadith. Do you get the idea? Patience with the scholar. When you study, be patient, be patient. There is nothing called getting angry with your shaykh. Patience. Wallahi, you are lucky, you guys. Say Alhamdulillah, Wallahi, you are lucky. Some scholars, they, some students, they have to go to the shaykh and the shaykh has dogs in his house so that nobody can approach him. Imam Amash, he has dog, he has dog in the house. The student cannot come to his house and take hadith. One of the scholars, they, the, the, he was blind person, his student got him on the way, he got lost. They said, Sheikh, it looks like you couldn't find your house. He said, yes, I need somebody to guide me. They said, no, Sheikh, you are very stingy in hadith. We will never take you to the house unless if you give us one hadith. He said, okay, no problem. I, I just say, for the sake of Allah, they said, no, no, uh, we, have, we have to get one hadith first. He said, no problem. Take me to the house. They took him to the house, and then he decided to go to the house without telling them the hadith. They said, no, Sheikh, we will never let you. You have to say something. He said, choose one. You want the Sanad or you want the Matin? The Sanad, the Isnad, what are they going to benefit with it? They said, Sheikh, you are our Isnad. So we don't need Isnad. We need Matin. I forgot the Matin, but he gave them Matin that they cannot benefit with it in this life or in the hereafter. Imam Amash, one day he was sitting in his house, then he saw a student come into the house. He cried. They asked him, why did you cry? He said, His dog is dead, that's why they came. So when he see them in the house, he said, he cried. He said, that means my dog is, is dead. The student can get him. But now, you can get it in UIA. In the masjid, they have lessons. In khutbah, they have lessons. And they have a lot of lessons in this masjid. In your classes also, you have some lessons. But what did you do with it? This is a blessing that Allah SWT is going to question you about, about it. So being patient with the Shaykh is essential. You get this part. So please, 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 whenever you study from a Shaykh, be very patient with him because you will never stay with him forever. Uh, the last few things that I think I should give you that we can move forward is uh, uh, what I call Ulul Himma. High determination. Ulul him learning. This one without it, you will never succeed in learning. Ulul himma means you have to be very dedicated in what you're doing. The knowledge. You have to be very dedicated towards it and you have to be very consistent in such a way knowledge comes first with you. You think of it, you swim in it, you dream in it, you live in it. And what does that mean? It means you have to reduce your sleep. Who sleeps four hours in a day? Okay, this is sister's class. She says, who sleeps four hours in a day? None. Only four hours. None. Okay. Five hours. None. Six hours. None. Eight, eight hours. Or oh, six hours can. Eight hours, that's the average, right? Ten hours, that's the vast majority. The whole day, that's some. We have, you see, I have a person, I know this person, he slept for one day. 
and he was a student of knowledge, studying in the faculty of Quran in Medina. But he's left for a year. But honestly speaking, uh, student, you will never get knowledge if you sleep a lot. For a student of knowledge, normally four hours is enough for you. That's actually sometimes too much. Well, I wish these days will come back again. The days when I was memorizing and the days when I was learning with my first degree, I wish these days will come back again. It become a, a history and a dream. Because my life when I was memorizing Quran and I was in the secondary school in those days, I finished the Quran. Alhamdulillah, I finished, finished it uh, 92 and memorized was done with my Quran. I don't know how many years is that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it takes me the first part of it because I was learning from the beginning, from, from, from zero. I don't even know how to read it properly. So the first part of it takes me a year. The second part of it took me three months. Only to finish it. Why is that? You will know it also if you take the same process. But how do I memorize? I like to, to give this example because it helps me a lot. I used to come back from Fajr, from the masjid. I come to sit in my room. I sit on the, my chair, bed, or whatever. Sit down and revise whatsoever I memorized earlier, no matter how much big it is. The first thing I usually begin with is to revise what I memorized yesterday. I read it first, and then I revise the old memorization. 10 juzu, 15 juzu, whatever juzu I memorized, I revise them first. Before I move, and then after I finish revising, then I take one hour to put at least four pages memorization, good memorization. And then after that, I will go to the mother, the last one, I'll tell her, preserve her, reward her. I take my, my, my food, I do necessary uh, hygiene should take, and then go to the masjid if there is no school. I used to have a small size Quran that, always, that is always in my pocket. Allah knows every single second of my life I live with Quran. My brain never stopped thinking of Quran. That's what helped. And my Sheikh told me that if you finish Quran, your position in paradise is going to be high. So I used, I used to open the Quran like this and check how many left. And I used to be in a state of fear of me dying tomorrow, then I would never reach that position. That was the motivation that I had, which motivated me to finish the Quran very quickly. Look at the effort. I will go to the masjid and stay there if there is nothing until Zuhur. Zuhur time I come to my, to my sheikh. We eat food. If they have nothing, we don't talk. I go back to Quran. After Asad, I go back to Quran. At night, I come, I read some Quran. And then uh, before I sleep, I revise. I must make sure that I read what I memorized and I go to sleep. That's what helped my Quran to, to be maintained here. That was a life. I enjoyed in those days. But I don't have no children. No wife, no anybody to take some part of my life. That was the reason why it was so easy. But I do believe that a husband, it might be a little bit difficult for him to give that much of time. But a wife and a woman, if she's sitting at home, especially the one that does not work, in, doesn't work, you have an excellent time more than anybody else. And you as a student in this, in this place, in this university, before you graduate and start going to either working or staying as a uh, housewife, I'm telling you, you have an excellent time to, to memorize the book of Allah SWT if you wish. So that was dedication. That was high determination. When I went to the Islamic University, I like to give you this example because I'm teaching you. Take the same thing. I use my own version to see, can I produce something out of nothing? I remember in the Islamic University, I'm telling you, my sisters, sometimes I sleep in a day less than 30 minutes. I slept the Imam in the, of the Masjid, we are having the same room. They have one room, six people, they divide it, they cut it, everyone has his own separate room. The Imam is in my room. He has a big alarm clock. clock. He used to tell me, please Ibrahim, wake me up for Fajr. I usually sleep a few minutes before Fajr. And then I will go and wake him up. I come back, the university usually begins 7.30. Here is 8.30, right? And still people, they are sleeping and they don't come sometimes. There is 7.30. I don't sleep at night. And I'm telling you, after the class, I usually eat and then come back and memorize my books. I remember one of my friends, he came to me, he told me that, Ibrahim, I want you to be my friend, but you have to stop punishing yourself. 
One of them told me that we cannot do like you because you sleep. I sleep in a day between Asr and uh, between the Adhan and Ikama of Asr. I go to the masjid after memorizing whatever I'm memorizing. I go to the masjid, I sit down there. When they make the Adhan, I just close my eyes for a while. That's the sleep of the day. We we'll go for a night. When they have a holiday, there was a holiday that I do not travel. I sit in my house. I usually come back to the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu and sit down in the house. Wallahi, and when I sit down, I cook my food, which is the most excellent food, but you have to bring ambulance next to you. Because I put all, everything all together. I don't have time to cook the nice one, right? Rice and chicken and uh, what else they have? Chili and tomato and everything all at once. After 15 minutes, when I smell some burning, that means it is ready. I go and get it and then come back to my book until, until they make Adhan for Fajr. Then I move to the Masjid, pray and come back, I complete what I used to, I'm supposed to complete, then I sleep. That was the life. Most of the things that you see me talking about, I got them from those days. So the utilization of the time at the moment that Allah SWT has given you is very important. This high determination should be maintained. You must believe in what you're doing and you must believe in its importance and you must strive for it. Sleeping is not a way for a student of knowledge at all. You will never get it through the sleeping. Imam al nawawi they mentioned that he spent around 4 years or 40 years, he did not have a proper sleeping. He always sleep with the book in, hand, in, in his hand. When the sleep comes, he like a little bit and then come back to the book and the book is ready. Imam al-Bukhari, they mentioned that he wakes up at night for almost 13 times before he sleeps. I mean, 13 times he sleep and then wake up, write something, and then go back to sleep, wake up almost 13 times of waking up to take note of what he took from his share. Imam al Nawaw used to take around 13 classes or 20 classes. He would never sleep before he memorized each and every one of them. Jabir bin Abdullah went travel for a month to take hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you're not impressed with this, I told you I go from here to there. That's actually nothing. It's just like going to the, mas to the first line in the masjid for them. Baqi ibn Makhlad, please do remember this. He went looking for Imam Ahmad. He spent 4,000 kilometers. Can you believe in this? History talk about this story of this man going to Imam Ahmad. He spent 4,000 kilometers. That's high determination. Shu'ba, when he wants to confirm a hadith that he knows, they told him the, the sheikh who said the hadith is in Mecca. He went to Mecca, they told him he's in Medina. He went to Medina, they told him, no, he's in Basra. He came back to Basra to get the sheikh. And at the end of the day, according to him, the hadith is inauthentic. But they're willing to travel because they know the importance of what they're doing. I'm telling you, this is the reason why they are in the position they were. We also, for us to be like them, we have to do the same thing. There are a lot to be said when it comes to uh, the virtues and attitude of a student of knowledge. But I will leave you with this. The remaining, inshallah, will come through our lessons. I have like two, two, three, four, five minutes to stop the class. But I will leave you with this. Please, when you go back to uh, the house after we study any portion of the book, as I said, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it many times until you feel that you're almost memorizing it. You get an idea. Then compare all of the notes you write and all of the statement I, I said and whatsoever you can get to be connected to that information before you come to the next, next class. You have a week. If you want to memorize it, you can memorize it. One week is more than enough for you to keep everything. You get the idea. So please, please, please don't disappoint the one who is given a time. I think this is the only time I have in my life to do something. Yeah. I believe in benefiting people. See, I have my classes in the university from almost every day. Almost every day. Right after I finish the class, it is only Monday that I think I have a rest. Tuesday I have these two classes. I just go home, finish what I'm doing, and then come back for my Tuesday classes here in the Masjid Riyadh Salihin, right? And Tafsir. Uh, Wednesday I have class up to 10.30. Thursday I have class up to 12 sometimes. Uh, sometimes we come back around uh, 1 or 2. And uh, Friday also I have Tafsir cl class also at night. I have Friday class also with this little tiny people. That's, that's life. I love doing it. But I like to teach somebody who wants to benefit. 
here is Saturday, Sunday, this is my busiest day. The only time that left for me to rest is this moment. Then I give it to you guys. So let's see an honest decision, inshallah. And also learning process that is going to be taking place. Then I will enjoy having it. I will favor this class more than any, any other class, inshallah. Uh, as I said in conclusion, please start memorizing Quran from, from this moment. Inshallah, I provide good and excellent sisters who can listen to your memorization and fix your tajweed. Either like from your house, you can do it. Make an arrangement with them. Either like we're going to take the list and then from your house, you can do it. But please, please, please try as much as you could before the end of this year. This year? This year possible? Okay, let's say before the end of next year. Nobody should come to this class having one ayah left from the Book of Allah. Do you get it? Is it possible? It's more than possible, inshallah. You get an idea. You need any assistance, we can help you. Do you get it? And uh, lastly, memorization does not mean you read it 10 times. That's not memorization. Memorization is not, does not mean you read it 100 times. That's not memorization. How many times do you need to read it? Uncountable amount of times. You get an idea. If you want it to stay, I want the Quran to stay with you forever. But you can read it 10 times, 30 times, and you can have it in the heart. But after a period of time, it will be gone. But if you want it to stay with you forever, then you have to read it more than that. You have to go beyond this, inshallah. So inshallah, from time to time, we will teach you how to put it properly. Uh, with that, I think I should end this uh, session. Uh, Asan is in five minutes, right? Okay. So you have these five minutes to ask about anything that left that you think you should ask. Uh, if not, after five minutes, we shall close the class with uh, Father, how do we take the attendance? Uh, who will take the award with that? So please don't uh, forget to write your name. And uh, those of you who are interested in uh, joining the, uh, the memorization right online, please do write in front, uh, in front of your name that yes, you, you, you are joining. Just write Quran, inshallah, so that we will take note, inshallah. Uh, including your email. Don't forget to write your email. I thought they already have it. Okay, any question? Some of them didn't write your email. Okay, uh, he says some of them the email maybe is incorrect or you did not write your email. So please do write it because this is the only way we can, we can get you. And also assignment, when I give assignment, the submission is going to be like that, online. You just forward it to our, our email and shout. Question, any question? Yes. What is? Uh, did I give the assignment? I gave it. Okay, when is it due? Next week. Yeah. Whenever I give assignment, please try do it next next week and, and submit it through the website. Uh, what you should do is just a page about Ibn uh, about uh, Abishuja. Who is he? His attitude. How did he learn? Uh, what is his position? Which madhab he has? How did he compile the book? What was the motivation behind that? Uh, next, next. Uh, that is something that I will say. Please, when we come to the class, please don't move until the last minute that we say officially the class is ended. You get it? We want it to be class, 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 class. Not just like the place we come to listen to Mawai. It's when we, even if I say this is question and answers, it doesn't mean that you should go. We remain in the class. Until the last minute of the class, then everyone is allowed to go. So please do take this. Otherwise, sometimes when somebody stand up, I will say, please sit down. And I think it's so embarrassing, right? Any question? Any question? So please do utilize uh, this uh, email thing. Whenever you have a question that you think it is not, I mean, you cannot say it, email, inshallah. I'm always there to answer your questions, please, and like, Allah. Done for any anything that comes into your mind that you, need, you, you think you should know, just email me. I will reply, inshallah. But I prefer if you can talk to talk. Because it saved my time. Sometimes I stay for two hours writing email 
to make sure that I write the correct thing. But if I talk, it's all about one minute. And then she's done. Yeah. You get an idea. So, but there are some occasions maybe you cannot say it. Then email it, inshallah, I'll reply. If the point is don't keep quiet. They mentioned that they asked Abdullah ibn Abbas, how did he, did you learn? He said, I always ask. I don't keep quiet. Two minutes left. Any question? Any question? No question. So tomorrow, inshallah, the, those who memorize the Quran or have the, uh, half of it, uh, we're going to have Arabic class for one hour, 15 minutes, for everyone. And then uh, the, the remaining will go, uh, those uh, Quran uh, people, they will stay, inshallah. Then we have those who will then also to stay, inshallah. One minute left. You have to keep the time, right? No question. Okay, I have one question before the end of the minute. Uh, I need your attention. Do you think you benefited in this class? Sure. Be very honest, please. If you think you're not benefiting, let me know. Do you think you benefited? Yes, right. Do you think learning it is taking a process here? Do you think so? Okay, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. My job is... It's accomplished. Thank you very much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and increase your sincerity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase your knowledge. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you among the best in this life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the day we're going to have a better gathering in Firdaus al Allah And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from the evil of this life and from everything. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shalala ilaha illa illa anta astaghfirullahi wa Oh. Uh -huh.